Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is John Helen Goutway. I, I work in the DTC, and uh, this morning we're gonna we're gonna hear a presentation from George McCabe about um, <clears throat> about the configuring uh, setting up the configuration for Met Plus. There's lots and lots of details to cover there. Um, I want to do first get everybody uh, to the agenda page of the training series. So I'm gonna drop that link into the chat. There we go. So there's a, the, the agenda. Um, so in in uh, session four, which we did twice, we did J on December 21st and on January 4th. Um, I wanted to I wanted to make one comment about one thing we covered there. In the extra exercises, um, the uh, one of the users ran through the extra exercises of reconfiguring Gridstat and found that although he uh, configured it to request output for relative humidity. Uh, no output was created. So the log messages said, I found forecasts and OBS match pairs for relative humidity, um, but but he found no output in, in the uh, generated for relative humidity. And so Tina Kalb and I looked more closely at it and we realized um, the issue is um, the example that we're running in Gridstat compares forecast data to observation data, but it also uses climatology data. And our climatological data set that we're using had no relative humidity data in it, um, which is which is fine. Um, but the reason why we got no output is that we were only requesting anomaly statistics in the output. So anomaly statistics require both forecast data, observation data, and climatology data. If any of those are missing, you won't get um, you won't get compute anomaly statistics. So Tina then updated the the uh, the the tutorial exercises to state, um, please reconfigure when you're doing this doing this one reconfigure it to also request uh, scalar statistics and partial sums, and uh, continuous statistics. And then after doing that, you should see relative humidity generated in the output. But I think it's a good example of um, thinking carefully about the data that you're using, as well as how you have the tools configured, um, and and so when you when you uh, don't see expected output, but the, the output you expect from the Met tools, it's it's great to go back and look at the log messages. And if you if you look at them carefully enough, there is one that says uh, no climatology data found for relative humidity. Um, also, if you don't get what you expect, and you look at the log messages and you don't find the information you need. You can always rerun at a higher verbosity level. And maybe George, in your talk, you can point out how you configure the verbosity level through Met Plus. And the, basically, by verbosity, I mean that increases the amount of log information that's that's printed to the screen. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over to George to talk about Met Plus. Great, thanks, John. Um, hi, everyone. I'm George McCabe. I'm a software developer at on the Met Plus team. Uh, I'll turn on my camera for a second so you can put a face to the name. Uh, but I'll go ahead and share my screen and show you um, some of the basic configurations that you can set in the Met Plus wrappers. Okay, I'll make this a little bigger. Is that text big enough for everyone to read? It's good for me. Good, thanks. OK, um, so this is the system configuration chapter of the Met Plus user's guide. Uh, it's chapter three. Um, and it describes all of the different configuration settings that you can um, you can set through the Met Plus wrappers. Um, I'm going to review a portion of this page, but we highly recommend that you read through this guide as there's a lot of good information in here. Uh, the chapter starts with a few recommendations and best practices to, uh, that users should be aware of when they're getting started. Um, and I'll review a few of those now. Um, so the log level defined by this variable log underscore level, um, it's good to be aware of that and set that to an appropriate level. Uh, by default, the value is info, which outputs just basic information to the screen and to the log files. Uh, but if you set this value to debug, it will generate um, a little more output in the logs. Um, and users are encouraged to run with the de debug setting, um, especially when you're getting started with Met Plus wrappers or if you're investigating some unexpected behavior. Um, 
more often than not, when I'm running the tools myself, I almost always have debug um, set so that I can see the extra information as there's a lot of useful things that are that are shown from there. Um, it, you should also be aware that you should review the log files to verify that all the processes ran cleanly. Um, so there's some log output will be written to the screen, but the log files will often contain more information than that, such as the output from the individual MET executables. Um, so it's always good to, um, to review those files explicitly instead of relying on just the screen output. Um, the order in which the MET plus configuration files are passed to the run script matters. So each subsequent config file defined on the command line will override any values defined in an earlier config file. Um, and it is recommended that you create a user configuration file and pass that to the script last to guarantee that all the values in that file are used in case any of those variables are accidentally set in a previously read config file. Um, and I'll go into details about the user configuration file in a little bit. Um, the last bullet point I wanted to review is um, the MET plus conf variable defines uh, the final configuration file that is generated from a run. Um, so this essentially read all of the configurations and then any default values that are set from your run will be added to this final file that's written. So you can review this and see what actually was used in your in your in a run. Um, and so that that can be useful for de debugging issues if you're sure that you set a, a specific setting and it's not doesn't seem to be using that setting, you can actually see what it is using. Um, so next, I will skip down to the default configuration file. Um, this file is found in the parm met plus config directory, and it's named defaults.conf. Um, the settings that are in this file are loaded automatically at the start of a met plus wrappers run, so you do not need to invoke it on the command line. Um, that's an off often a, a misconception from new users, is they think they need to pass this file to the command, but it is read automatically first thing, so you do, do not need to do that. Um, among the settings in this file include uh, the location of the MET installation where the ex MET executables are found, um, directories where the input data is located, directories where you're going to write output data and temporary files, um, the lo different log settings for the MET plus wrappers and the MET applications, which John touched on and I'll get into more detail soon. Um, and then locations of other things such as non-MET executables and binaries that may be used in, in the workflow. Um, the values in this file can either be set directly in this file or if you have permission to, to edit the file or in a user configuration file. Um, so I will go through the required variables that must be set before you can run. Um, there are three main variables that I'll have to discuss here. Um, so any variable that you can see in the default file that's set to slash pass slash two, um, that should alert you that that value must be changed before you're, you run, um, either in this defaults file or in your user config file. Um, and if, if you run without changing these, it will result in an error. Um, the first variable I will talk about is this met installer. This is the directory where the version of um, met is with met and the met executables is is going to be used for your run. Um, this is typically in a directory named met or met with the version number followed by it. Um, and it contains among other things, at very least a share and a bin directory. Um, this is the bin directory sometimes called exec on some systems. Um, the bin directory will contain all of the met executables such as grid stat. Um, so if you're looking around on your system and you find a directory that has this bin directory that has all of these tools such as grid stat, ASCII to NC, um, then that is, is the met installation area. Um, so based on the results here, you would set met installer to user local met. Um, often in shared installations of the MET plus wrappers, this value will already be set for you in the defaults comp file as sort of part of the installation process. Um, this is because there is a corresponding version of the MET executables that, um, that matches up with the version of the MET plus wrappers. Um, so exa for example, what we're using in this tutorial 
is the Met Plus Wrappers version 4.0.0, and that corresponds to the Met version 10.0.0. Um, so as part of the shared installation, that the Met installer is automatically or is already pointing to the correct version for you. Uh, but you can also override those values if you need to. Um, for example, if there's a new beta release, a, a development version that's come out and you need some functionality in that to test that your use case will work, you can override that Met install installer to the beta version in your user config file and use that version instead of the version that was set by default. Uh, the next variable here is the input base. Uh, this is the directory that contains the sample input data that's used to run the use cases. Um, the use cases that are provided with the repository are found under PARM use cases. Um, and the data corresponds to the different um, model applications categories and the Met tool wrapper use cases. Um, so the directory um, that you would set for this is a directory that contains these subdirectories that correspond to the different use cases. Um, if you were downloading this data um, directly from the web, you would untar those files into this directory, this D1 Met Plus data or whatever directory on your system, and it will automatically create these subdirectories for you. Um, and th this is often on shared installations is, is set for you because we provide the input data that's required to run the examples that we provide um, with sort of with that installation. So this should be already set for you. But you can also change it to something else. Um, for example, if you're developing a new use case and you want to make sure that the structure of the directories lines up, you can create a new directory and create a model applications directory under that to sort of add your data there. And lastly, the output base. This is the directory where all of your output files and log files will be written. Um, it should be set to any path on the system where the user running has permission to write files. And the directory will be created automatically if it does not already exist. Um, here's an example of just a path that's set here. Um, this is more often than not, not un left unset in the default config file. And the reason is we want to make sure that users that are running set this for themselves. Um, if this value is set to a, a valid path on the system by default, then multiple users could be running and overwriting each other's files and get very confused of what's going on. So we often leave this to the user to set in their user config file. Um, okay, let's see. Um, now that I've talked about the, the required variables, I'll skip down to this user config file section and talk about how we structure those. Um, so we recommend again that users create their own config file for each system that they're running on. Um, this file will be passed into the run script um, at the very end after any use case configuration file. So to, to be sure that any settings in this file are used in case they're set in a previously read file. Um, you can also create multiple user config files on the system if you have different workflows that you're working in and, and you want to keep things separate. Um, at a very minimum, you will need to set this output base variable. Um, so here's an example of a bare minimum user configuration file. It starts with the config heading in square braces and then the output base followed by a value to a path. Um, if you're using an installation of the wrappers that do not have these defaults, met installer or input base set, then you'll need to set this in your default configuration file. Or sorry, you'll have to set this in your own user configuration file. Um, and you can also set this um, as well if you need to change the value from the defaulted set. Um, so this is where, when, when I'm running, I'll often have log level equals debug set in my user configuration file so that anytime I run, it will use those settings. Um, then next, I'll talk briefly about use case configuration files. Um, so these files ha contain all the information that's specific to a use case that's being run. Um, we have many examples of these in the Met Plus repository under PARM use cases. Um, the directories um, under here um, correspond to the different categories of use cases. So Met Tool Wrapper are all the use cases that run one single wrapper. 
and show you examples of how to configure just that wrapper. Um, and then model applications contain subdirectories uh, organized by category. And these contain use cases that often run more than one wrapper in succession to demonstrate how the, these different tools can be used together in more complex verification workflows. Um, we will go into more detail about the variables that are set in these files uh, at another session. Um, but briefly, I wanted to um, talk about this main point that these use case configuration files should not set any of these values that are set in, in the that are specific to a user's environment, such as input base, output base, met installer. Um, however, these variables are referenced by other variables in these files. So here's a quick example. The grid stat forecast, forecast input dir is set to a path that's relative to input base. Um, so if you obtain the data and put it in a directory and point input base to it, it should run smoothly without any modifications. Um, similarly, with output directories, um, we often set the output directories based on the output base. So whatever you set your output base to, all of the data will be written um, in, in subdirectories relative to that directory. OK, um, next I'll go jump back up to the log variables that are set in the defaults. Um, and I'll go through a few of these settings, and then we'll break out to a hands-on session where you can play around with some of these settings and see how it affects your, your runs. Um, so first, the log met plus variable defines the name of the log file that will be written, the main met plus log file. Um, by default, the value you can see is relative to logdir, and it contains this log timestamp template. Um, the logdir, by default, is just a directory under the output base called logs. Um, it's not often that users would change this value, but you can if you want to write your logs to a completely separate directory. You can do that. And then the log timestamp template is the, the format of the, the precision of the time that's used in your, um, in your files. So by default, it's set to um, include the current time up to the seconds, which means that a new log file will be generated every time you run the wrappers. Um, you can adjust this value to change the frequency of, of creating a new log file. For example, if you want all of the logs from a single day to be written to a single file, you can change this log timestamp template to just year, month, day. Log timestamp use data time is a variable that uh, by default is set to no. So it will use the, the current clock time of when you started the Met Plus wrappers as the timestamp for your log files. Um, if you set this to true or yes, it will use the first time in your um, in your time looping variables. So basically the the timestamps of your log files will correspond to the data that you're processing and not the clock time that you started your execution. Um, we'll get into more detail about these time looping variables um, later. Log met output to met plus by default is true. Um, when this is true, the output from the individual met applications will be written to the same log file as the rest of your met plus output. If you change this to false or no, uh, the output will be written to a separate file that will be named after the application. Um, so for example, if you're running a, a use case and it calls grid stat, um, all of the grid stat output will be written to a separate file. So if you need to do some debugging and it's there's too much information in the main log file and you'd prefer to have all of the grid stat log output in a separate file so you can parse through it more easily, then this is a good setting to, to switch to, to be able to do that. Next is the log level. Um, this is what I mentioned before. It's the level of logging output to the for the MetPlus wrappers. Um, it does not control the logging output of the individual Met applications, uh, which is another variable I will discuss soon. The these are the possible values you can set. Um, the default is info, which gives you a lot of good information, but bumping it up to debug will give you a lot of extra output that's that's useful for debugging. 
Um, but once you've developed a use case and and worked out all the kinks, then it likely be a good idea to change this back to info so that you don't get a lot of extra log output that you don't need. Log met verbosity is the setting that controls the verbosity level for all of the met applications. Um, so each met application has a, a verbosity level that is an integer. Um, lowest is one. I think it goes up to 10. It may depend on the tool. Um, but the default is two. Um, so if you set log met verbosity to two, then all of the met tools that you run in your use case will use the log setting of two. Um, you can also override individual tool verbosity. So in this example, we set all of the, um, the met verbosity to two, except for ASCII to NC will be bumped up to three, and point stat will be bumped up to four. Um, so this is useful if you are debugging and you have uh, issues with a certain tool is not producing the output that you're expecting. You can bump up the ver verbosity for that individual tool and dive into the logs and and get a better idea of what's going on and why it's not giving you the results that you expect. Um, there are some settings to control the format of each log line. Um, so there's settings for the info, error, and debug output. Um, the defaults here will result in a line for each. Um, each debugging line will contain the, the timestamp of when that line was hit. Um, a name identifier, and then the um, level of logging verbosity um, followed by the actual log message. Um, the error and debug default format contains the same timestamp, but it also contains uh, the line of the code where this line was where this error or debug message was hit. So this is useful for um, developers debugging. They can see where an error occurred and, and dive in a little closer and see what went wrong. Um, you can also change the date format too. Instead of having month and day with hour, minute, and seconds, you can change that to, um, to other timestamps as well. Um, so now we will jump back to the practical session um, where we left off last week. Um, so we finished with exercise 1.2 with RH. Um, and now we'll work on exercise 1.3, which just involves um, creating a, a separate, um, essentially, user configuration file, this tutorial file, um, and then playing around with some of the logging settings and running the grid stat use case and seeing how the changes that you've made in your file affect the actual output. Um, so I can throw this link in the chat again in case anybody joined after this was posted previously. Um, first, before we get into that, are there any questions? I see there's some things in here. Are there any questions that we want to discuss before moving on? George, there was one um, question from Evan that maybe that might be interesting to others. Would it be accurate to say that each Met tool has a Met Plus wrapper and use case? Uh, that's a good question. Um, not every Met tool, um, but many of them do. Um, and so you can refer to the in the user's guide. There is a chapter called Python wrappers. And this lists all of the existing um, wrappers. And you can look at this list to refer to see which uh, Met tools are, are currently wrapped. Hey, George, do we have a, a current running list or even a memory list in someone's mind of the tools that are not currently wrapped? Um, there is a diagram somewhere that's um, color coded of what what it's implemented and what is not. Um, and offhand, I don't know where that exists. Uh, does anybody on the team happen to know where that is? I I don't. Um, I I want to point out though that the kind of the the choice of the order in which we worked on them is really driven by 
our experience using the tools and you know, based on what's, what is most useful. So there are several um, smaller utilities in MET, like there's there's one uh, GI uh, for, for dealing with, with uh, shape files. So GIS, dump DBF, dump SHP, um, those sorts of things. We haven't actually needed to run those in a, um, you know, like a, uh, in a routine way and like in an evaluation workflow. Um, so those are very low priority to wrap. Um, so so I would say that the ones that are wrapped really do meet, um, have are, are used to meet most of our project needs. Okay, um, so navigating to this practical session page, exercise 1.3, um, the instructions have you copy your tutorial configuration file into another file called tutorial underscore logging dot um, and then change at least the output base to a new directory for the exercise. Um, and then we encourage you to um, add any of the logging variables that you're interested in changing and seeing how the results affect your run and then using the grid, st grid stat configuration use case file to um, to do your testing. Um, a reminder too, you'll need to source your environment configuration file, or sorry, in, your in, um, tutorial environment setup script if you have not done that yet. Um, so go ahead and uh, Kind of play around with this. There's um, some examples on this page of some settings and a little short description. Um, and then the user's guide also has um, a lot of that information that I covered. And I'll put that link in the chat as well. Um, and so feel free to ask any questions in the chat um, if, if you have any.
I'm seeing some questions in the chat um, about no sound. Um, so no one is currently talking. Um, we're encouraging users to run through this logging exercise and play around with the settings. Um, we can do that for another uh, few minutes or so. And then um, John Opatz will be taking over to do another presentation about how the MET plus configuration variables relate to the MET configuration settings.
Okay, John, are you ready to start your presentation? Yes, I am. Great. If we feel everybody has had enough time, and it seems like it. So, uh, good morning, everybody. This is John Opatz. Um, so, I came to the Met team actually uh, right around two years ago, at the beginning of 2020, um, at about this time in January. The reason why I bring that up is because I'm relatively new um, to the system. Um, and at, even to this day, I'm still learning things. As I uh, incorrectly stated in the chat, not all Met tools are wrapped, um, but Dang it, if we're not close to 90% at this point. Um, but the, the, the reason is I'm still learning this system. I'm still finding out what works for me. And I hope that that kind of uh, newness to the system is uh, applicable to you all. Um, there's, there's things that you'll find as you go through that work for you and things that, you know, as we're trying to teach them. And that we've got a great group here. George gave a great presentation um, of a lot of stuff to get you introed into the Met Plus side, whereas before we were kind of approaching the Met side, um, the individual tools. Um, but I know that sometimes it can be daunting because these are experts. These are people who have built this system, who have really helped you all um, uh, implement things probably from the VSDB side or your own integral systems into Met Plus, and they help it run. So sometimes um, they can they can help you understand the very detailed understandings that I, I definitely can't yet. Um, but it it can sometimes seem daunting when you're presented with this system that does so much. And sometimes you only need it for you know two inches and it provides six feet. Um, so the reason why I bring all this up is it ties into what I'm going to be talking about, which is the wrapped configuration options. So let me share my screen and uh, get started here. Uh, here. Excellent. So um, hopefully you can see the screen here. Uh, I'm going to pop over here. Hopefully you can see the system configuration. So I'm going to be going over kind of what's inside these configuration files and how they map between Met tools and Met Plus tools, uh, the wrapped versions. When you have to, and I'll I'll blow this up one more time. There we go. Um, so when you have to, a lot of times when you start, I'm sure some of you have started like I did with um, jumping into Met. It can seem daunting. Sometimes you don't quite understand the wrapped variables. And in terms of me, I went back to the Met tools. I found that entering things on the command line, maybe it's because my brain was very one-to-one. -one. Um, Met tools presented a very easy way or an easier way to get into the Met Plus suite, the software suite. Um, but as you go through it, you really can't continue using just Met tools. Um, it's it's so convenient to use Met Plus to wrap around multiple tools to make it do um, a series um, of tool calls or multiple tool calls multiple times. And you're not having to write your own Python scripts because people like George have already written it for you, have already helped you do that capability. Um, so when you when you see things, when you start with Met, um, you'll get simple things like this in the GridStat config default. Um, for example, we're going to stick with GridStat right now because it's an easier tool to understand. Um, so you'll see something like this, description equals NA. And if we jump over here, um, to an actual grid stack config default file. Um, if you're familiar at all with the grid stat tool, hopefully you are because we had that training. Um, you can see the description equals NA up here. That's kind of the default, um, I think. Or it's actually it might be um, empty. Uh, but the point is that this is this is the file that you see uh, in the grid stat tool, and it's the default value that will go into the system. However, in the wrapped version, you'll see that it is a description equals Met plus descript. And so I'll pull that up. Every tool that's wrapped will have, or nearly all of them, will have a wrapped configuration file that looks like this. So very similar to what we see with the grid stack config default, but the wrapped version usually has this little dollar sign and the, uh, uh, the brackets here. And that's just a way that we can feed in from your configuration file that you're going to be using with Met Plus and feed it back into the Met tool that you're using. So 
if we go back to this page, we can see that when it's run, when a grid stat tool is run, it'll read in that default version first. So it'll read in this NA of the description. Then it'll go into that wrap version and say, oh, OK, actually, Met plus description is what I should be filling in over this if it's been filled in. That means that grid stat or the wrapped version will go to your configuration file and look for your description that you've plugged in. So that's where we have to go to this third configuration file. This is the one that you want to be using when you're using a tool like GridStat inside of the MEP Plus wrapper system. You want to be using things like this because if we go down here to the description, this is where you can put in whatever you'd like and it will override the value that is the default in the grid stat config default. So if we were to list out banana here, um, it would write over NA, it would write in NA first um, because that's the one that it reads in first. Then it goes to your wrapped version and it finds that it has met plus description here. So that tells it to go to your configuration file um, for grid stat and it'll grab banana here if it's actually banana. Um, and at once you run everything, your grid stat description will be banana or whatever description you want. So there's a lot of systems or there's a lot of variables in the um, in grid stat specifically where it's a one to one. So things like uh, things like the model is model, ob type is ob type, and a great place to see this is actually on this page. So George already alluded to it. Um, that in the Python wrappers page, um, there's a giant list of every tool that's wrapped and some that are actually live only inside of Met Plus. Um, and you, at the beginning, so if I click on GridStat here, it'll bring you a giant list of every Met Plus configuration option that's currently listed. So these are all valid options to list inside your GridStat wrapped configuration file. And you can use any of these. And if you want more information, you click on one. It'll bring you right to the page here. And it'll tell you exactly what it's covering inside the MET configuration file for GridStat. So not only do you find out what to call it inside the MET Plus wrappers version, but you also know what it corresponds to in the MET configuration file, which is incredibly useful. You also have the search documents option up here in case you want to copy it paste it in here and see where else it appears in the user's guide. Um, just incredibly useful and a good way to find things if you're getting lost. After this very long list of variables that are either uh, listed as necessary or optional, there's also ones down here that if you're using older versions of MET and you see your um, variable names down here, it's probably time to update and start using it. Also, um, I'm think George has already said this before, or somebody from the team has already said this. If you do use one of these, uh, Met Plus will typically send you a warning um, that you're using an outdated configuration option um, and will typically list what you should be using. Um, so just be aware that there are listed of depreciated uh, variables here. But underneath all that, you'll also find the uh, the default, which is this one that I have up, which is just what GridStack calls on its own. It's if you've used the Met tools directly, this is what you've played around with. Um, but then you also have down here the wrapped version, which is what I've I've showed you before. Then down at the very bottom, after we go through all of these, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about some of these options, like the CI Alpha. You'll see doesn't have a um, a one to one. It's not wrapped. There's not an option to get into it directly. But we'll talk about how you can change that and why we shouldn't rely on things like that. Um, but at the very bottom, you'll find a list of one to one again. Um, so up at the top, we saw that there was a Met Plus description, and we see that in the Met config file, it corresponds to description, and the Met Plus configuration file, the wrapped configuration file, you'll see that it has a description or you control it by grid stat description. Either one um, is available. And things like ob type, you can write over ob type and the configuration file um, name is going to be ob type. You can get to it there. Some other ones that are a little more um, complicated come into uh, where it's a dictionary. So if Met uses a dictionary, for example, 
in the regrid option, you have several options inside this dictionary, the to grid, the method, the width, valid threshold, and the shape you want to choose. Um, in order to provide you easy access to it and not having to type very convoluted um, bracket upon bracket upon quotation um, to arrows or whatever else, um, we've gone ahead and provided uh, variables inside MEP plus configuration options that go directly to each option inside um, that dictionary. So you'll have things like the grid stat regrid shape goes to regrid dot shape. Um, grid stat regrid method goes to regrid dot method. So each of these options, even though it's not directly the same as regrid, it is, you can still get each of these options by calling things like this. And it's this page, as you're learning MEP Plus, I strongly encourage you to have this page. Again, it's the Python wrappers, so chapter four inside the user's guide of MEP Plus. Strongly encourage you to have this page up. And just if, if you're at all familiar with the MET tools, this conversion will be so much easier if this page is next to you or is in a tab somewhere. Because you can easily say, ah, I don't know what the, how to call the ob type. I just, and I don't quite understand MET plus ob type. Just scroll down here and the ob type will tell you right there. Oh, okay. So in the configuration file, I just put ob type. Got it. And if you need more information, it's right there. Just click on it inside the uh, nice little graph there and it brings you to um, the configuration glossary um, entry for it. So very quickly, I wanna just discuss um, the CI alpha. So this is an option that you can't get to by any variable call. It is hard coded um, both in the gridstat default file. Um, I think I passed it already. Um, or maybe it's not listed. Should be, there it is. Um, the CI alpha is here. Um, so 0 0.05, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, it's hard coded here. And also note that in the wrapped version, it's also hard coded, which is pretty rare. Most of these have some kind of wrapped option. That means that you can't get to it directly with a MET plus configuration option, except through an override option. So I'm not going to touch on this too much um, because there are there's a lot of intricacies, and I think that we'll probably end up discussing this later as well. But these override versions or these override variables were designed so that you can access anything, including the wrapped variables. You can still override them here. Doesn't make a lot of sense to do that, um, but you can. You can list out anything you want in these override versions, and what it effectively does is places anything at the that you list in the overrides as you can see here so in this case we're writing a description equals override description that means that at the very end of the configuration file as met or met plus reads in all of these um, variables it'll see the description override description and it'll overwrite anywhere that you've put in your configuration files, both in the MET default and the wrapped version, it'll get overridden by this option here. Um, and it is as simple as listing grid stat MET config overrides inside your wrapped configuration file. Again, this is the only one you really want to be editing. The reason for that is because if you edit this file, if you edit the wrapped um, the wrapped configuration file for any of the tools um, in future iterations, we don't know if CI alpha is going to stay 0 0.05. We also are pretty certain, as I uh, spoke to George before, we want to get rid of these. We don't want these hard coded into the wrapped version. We just want them to be in one place. So if we do end up changing CI alpha to make more sense as a 0.1, or a 0 0.07, we don't have to go to MET, change the CI alpha, go to MET plus, change the CI alpha, and now everybody who's been relying on it, who might download the new version, has to now go, oh, whoops, I, I have versionitis. I don't, I don't remember which CI alpha I should be dealing with. So try to utilize things just in the configuration file, and especially if you can't usually get to it, Again, there are options with config overrides. And if I go back, you can see that how many tools have the config override option built in already. Um, so make sure you use those if you see a variable in the MET 
um, configuration file, again, this one that you're probably used to, um, that you can't override directly with a wrapped version. There's, there's ways around that. With the last five minutes, um, are there any questions? Hey, John, I, this is uh, the other John. I dropped yep. a link into the chat um, providing uh, to, to, to the documentation in the Met uh, user's guide for description of exactly what CI alpha is. It's the <laughs> common center role alpha value. Um, so I, it, it's good, uh, you know, you can go to the, if, if there's a config option listed in Met Plus, um, you can go search for that in the Met user's guide and and see exactly what it means and, and what what it controls yes thanks john and that's that's exactly right if you if you start to get lost in the met plus uh, users guide and you're just not understanding what it's doing maybe the the glossary isn't exactly as detailed as you need it to be it's all based off of met this is all wrappers around met so there's a good chance that that option is detailed somewhere in the met users guide as john indicated ci alpha maybe you didn't quite understand what it was and because it's not wrapped there's no real definition of it it's in met so take a look in the users guide it's probably there i'm gonna quickly because we do have four minutes um, jump over to um, a terminal and show you um, this wrapped opportunity in action. So just very quickly, um, I've got, and I think I can, there we go. So you're not, there we go. So I, what I've done is I've just uh, switched over to the develop branch real quickly. I'm over in Seneca, which is one of our NCAR systems. And I, um, I've i just got a very basic, I'll show you, um, configuration file up, input base, output base, met install dir, which is using a beta 3 right now, and a few other executables, which are not necessary. What I want to draw your attention to, though, at the end is this log level equals debug. As George pointed out at the beginning of this session, um, there are multiple options you can do. Debug is one of the lengthiest. Don't suggest it if you're doing a... Um, I don't suggest it if you are doing a lot of tool runs or if you're doing a lot, a large series, um, because your log level will probably bury you in an avalanche of data. Um, if you like that or need that by all means, or if you're running into errors and you just can't get it at log level four or log level five, um, go ahead and throw in debug and see what happens. Um, but I don't suggest it unless you know that it's a very short and succinct um, log, or if you just need to, well, debug. Um, so I should have a command somewhere in here. Um, yeah, we'll just run it myself. So I'm going to run this very quickly. This should be just mit plus. Um, uh, run met plus i'm going to run the grid stat use case and what i want you to see is how things override um come on there we go Part use case met tool wrappers and then we're going to go into grid stat and we're going to gridstat.conf and i skipped control alpha uh make sure you have your dot c otherwise it won't read it Right. That dash C is actually not required anymore. Oh, it isn't. Well, look at that. Again, learning every day. Um, when was that implemented, by the way? Um, that's a good question. Uh, but I know at least 4.0.0, you do not need the dash. It doesn't hurt if you use it, but it's not required anymore. Yep. OK. Thanks, George. Um, so. Uh, always, this is the most satisfying thing to see um, that MetPlus took a very short time to run. And definitely that last one is the sentence you're looking for. MetPlus has successfully finished running. Feels very good to see that. Um, what I want to draw your attention to is up at the top, so close to where it's reading and everything. As you might have noticed, um, it's it's pulling in those defaults that George talked about in the MetPlus config. It's going into the Met Tool wrapper, gridstat, gridstat.conf, and it's grabbing my stuff as well. Um, and then really paying attention to this part right here, 
where it's grabbing all these default values, the grid stat, skip times, uh, the stat mandatory, skip if output exists, the user shell, do not run exe, uh, exe log grid stat verbosity. It's setting all of these defaults um, that it gets from that defaults comp and from the grid stat um, configuration option dot or underscore default, the one that I showed before. Um, then it's going through and filling in via the MEP plus configuration file, everything that's in there. So we can see things like the forecast field was set with name, level, cat thresh. We can see that the Fourier dictionary was left yeah, empty, that the model was set equal to wharf, um, that we're doing a little uh, uh, neighborhood shape of a square and the neighborhood width equal to one. These are all things that are set inside that dictionary. And it's overriding the, um, the default values which is great. Um, and then as we talked about before, and this is the last thing I'll show you today and let you ask your final questions and get off to the meetings that I'm sure you're eager to get to, um, you'll be presented with a MET plus underscore final. Um, this will tell you everything that went in there. Um, so you see all these user and vars, and you can have all the run times, the install directory, the configuration input. This is a great summary of everything that it got from you um, for your user end bars. And up above, you get all the variables that it put in there in the configuration file. So you see what process list it did, what your initialization times were set to, what the obs are. And this is a combination, basically, of everything from the default that you didn't override and everything from your wrapped configuration file that you did override, kind of like your variable thresh and your levels and everything else. So hopefully this gives you a few tools um, to get into the Met Plus world. If you're still stuck in the Met world, I strongly recommend you try to play around with even just a, a Met Plus wrapped version of one Met tool and slowly start expanding that way. It, this is such a powerful tool and a software system to get to use um, once you know how to use it, even from a very basic level. Um, so with that, are there any last questions? I know there's uh, quite a few bit of chats in the discussion, and it looks like most of them have been answered. OK, um, I think that's it then. We're two minutes over. Apologies for keeping you long, and thank you for staying on that you did. Um, it looks like we do have our next training seminar set up for next Tuesday at uh, 9 o'clock Mountain Time. So. Um, if there's anything else, let us know. Again, um, through GitHub discussions, if you have any issues that you run into, please post them there. Um, we will try to work with you, and hopefully the community can jump in and help you if they know the answer as well. But strongly encourage you to get out there and uh, learn a little bit of MetPlus if you got some time. <laughs>